So this Nissan Rogue is back. Imagine that. This is the one that had the transmission going into limp mode. It worked good for about two weeks, he said. Uh, roughly 400 kilometers he put on it, then all of a sudden it did it again. I did go to his place of work and scan it, and there were some codes in it. I have to have to look and see what they were. Uh, slightly different codes than it had this time, or the first time, but we're going to connect the scan tool up to it and scan it again and see see what it has to offer. Okay, so we're going to do a network code scan on this thing. Sorry for the furnace running, it's cold outside. Now I did go to the vehicle's owner's place of work a couple of days ago. I think it was last Thursday, or maybe it was Friday, it doesn't matter. And uh, I had cleared the code, so maybe they haven't even returned at this point. Why is it taking so long to connect to this thing? Nissan systems seem to be very slow for some reason. It should support automatic ID. Maybe I don't have the key on. But push button starts. I had it in accessory mode, not on. Helps when the ignition is actually live. Now this network code scan takes a few minutes, so I will compare the codes present now to the codes that were present the first time we had low power codes in the uh, transmission control module and I cleaned connections out of fuse and replaced a fuse and I thought that I had resolved the issue but it appears not. So we've completed the network scan and we have no codes in the engine, transmission, ABS. We do have one code in the audiovisual system and one code in the meter. Now that's interesting that U1000 code, CAN communication code, could have something to do with our problem. Now when I scanned it the other day, I scanned and, and we got an EVAP leak. Uh, that's secondary issue. Uh, when I scanned it the other day, I used a uh, ThinkDiag app on my smartphone, so I'll have to open up that and see what codes were stored at that time because the codes have not returned since then. He dropped it off on the weekend and hasn't driven it. So I may end up having to drive this vehicle with some test equipment on it. Let's have a look at the codes that set in history. Okay, so I mentioned that I had recorded this code in this Think Diag app. So let's look at the report here. Now it's asking me to log in. So let's look at this report. Here it is here. Let's see, that was on the 22nd, 1426, 1426. 1425 this is the initial report here so I did have a CAN communication circuit fault instrument cluster had the U1000 code ECM had a P1574 vehicle speed signal missing a small leak minor detail P0500 vehicle speed sensor A and this is a new code, the P1715 in police speed. I'm not even sure what that means. We had U1000 code in the radar laser system. Configuration error, chassis control, ignition power supply, C11, C1BB6. But we didn't have any codes in the transmission controller. And last time when it was in here, when I cleaned that fuse feeding power to the transmission controller, we did have a code in there. But to my knowledge, this 1574 and the P0500 are repeats of the codes we had in the history when we scanned it the first time. So here's the initial scan, September 28th. It had a P0500, which had again three, four days ago. A U1000 in the ECM wasn't there. But this P1715 is input speed sensor primary speed. And in the uh, 
think diag app it refers to it as in pulley speed that that code has returned as well as the 456 now this p0890 code hasn't come back neither has the battery voltage code in the anti-lock brake system um, now he had allowed the battery to become weak because the vehicle was sitting because they hadn't been driving it so I'm gonna focus on this P1715 because both the P0500 and the 1715 have returned so here's my thought process we got three fault codes related to similar things 1574 is for automatic speed control vehicle speed signal P0500 is vehicle speed signal. Uh, disagreement between the speed sensor reported, speed signal reported via the ABS module through the CAN bus network and the, and the instrument cluster. And then P1715 is the input speed sensor, which is this one here. I believe this is vehicle speed. This is input speed. They share a common power supply and they share a common ground. Now this F57 ground says front of engine and I can't find a ground picture but there is the power supply coming from fuse 46. Um, I'm not sure if that's the fuse that I cleaned because the fuses are not numbered in the fuse panel. We do not have the low voltage code that we had before but uh, I've taken the inner fender skirt out so that I can get at that fuse panel. So this is that fuse panel and I can see that it's been manipulated at the very least before because there's fresh electrical tape on here. Remember this car was in an accident. This was pushed back. I can see it's been straightened out. I wonder if we can just unclip this out of here or unbolt it out of here. It looks like this one bolt right here. I'm going to unbolt it. So it's pretty obvious that this was compromised in the accident it's been taped up I also found that this harness was pinched inside here as well I'm gonna open up the loom and see if there's any compromised wires in there well hope we get lucky so this plastic housing is pretty mashed up the piece was broken it was taped up with a bunch of electrical tape so I'm peeling off this because I want to check that spot there where the wire harness was pushed right in tight like that. Curious as to whether or not there's any compromised wires in there. Well, no silver bullet. You can see where those wires were really pushed up against this sharp edge of the fender here, but they didn't cut into them. They just came close. Don't see anything. Now that purple wire right there, that little 20 gauge or 22 gauge purple wire comes off of this one fuse that was corroded. That feeds power, ignition switch power to the transmission control module. But it's supposed to be a tan wire that goes from the fuse panel. And I don't even know if it is this fuse panel because like I said, these fuses aren't not numbered. There's only two fuses in here. There's five fuses in here, but there's no wires on the other side of those three fuses, so those have to be spares. Only the first two fuses have any anything to them. There's a gray wire and a purple wire here. So there's another fuse panel up above here. There's another spot where the wires are rubbing on the this is supposed to be clipped into that clip well there's all kinds of places where the wiring could be compromised hmm. well maybe we'll I'm gonna clean these grounds for sure and this ground on the transmission there's one sensor there and the vehicle speed sensor I believe is is back there 
can see it beside the transaxle shaft. And the primary input speed sensor is behind the starter in the front. I still haven't found that ground. Hmm. So further untaping this harness, and I see some hocus pocus going on here. I don't know what's up with that. Hmm. Now that's a gray wire. Two gray wires going in. There's some kind of a splice in there. So I was looking for the fuse locations in the vehicle in that power distribution center and I found the location of F57 the ground it's on the front of the valve cover I'll show you where it is on the vehicle these two grounds right here one of these ones I think this inboard one is F57 runs underneath the top of the motor but I still haven't found uh, Underneath this power distribution center, there are some fuses in here. I believe this tan wire is the wire that feeds the power to the speed sensors here. Uh, it does have power with the key on, and it comes from one of these 10 amp fuses, but I haven't figured out which one yet. I think that's connector E35 or E36. Man, they, they make these fuses difficult to get to. They got fuses underneath this power distribution, intelligent power distribution center. I hope I'm glad the power distribution center is intelligent because putting it there certainly isn't. So I was right. It is that tan wire and it is this 10 amp fuse here. On the cover here, it's labeled F13, but in the schematic here, F13 on the cover, but it's labeled fuse 46 just because they can. And that's the connector there, E35. And it's circuit 70 or pin 70 in that connector. So I'm not exactly sure what to do now other than to continue to look for a compromised wire in this harness. I'd like to know how the wires run. It turns out these two gray wires going into this splice, it was a factory splice, it was wrapped in yellow tape. Um, I untaped it because it looked off, odd. But it goes to the two cooling fan relays here. These two relays here are cooling fan relays one and two. And it comes from fuse 60 right there, which is that one right, the second one from the bottom. The other three fuses are not even used in here. Uh, this relay here, I'm not sure. I think this is starter cut relay. It's got pretty heavy wires on it. I think that's a starter cut relay. The fuse relay center is broken. Hmm. Be nice if we could find a replacement housing for this. I'm going to splice up these wires. So I'm going to try and find this plastic piece off the bottom of this fuse panel. Even if I have to order it in. Because this one here is all busted. And that's going to let Mother Nature in there. I've taken the ground cable off here. Cleaned up the body. And the two ground wires off of the body here and the ground cable off of this engine or the transmission bell housing and clean them. I'm going to shoot them with a little bit of paint just to keep them from rusting. Um, I'm going to test the CAN bus network and have a look at the CAN network integrity because the, the meter was setting a fault code for a communication problem. So I took the wiring harness apart further up here and I couldn't find any compromised wires. I did find a splice in that purple wire. That purple wire feeds the uh, transmission control module uh, ignition power from that 10 amp fuse. That's where we're at right now. If I can't find anything wrong with the CAN bus, then I'm going to try and monitor the uh, speed signals at the transmission computer, which is gonna be a challenge. So I took the trip to the local salvage yard today and managed to 
acquire this fuse panel assembly. Now we're going to take it apart and see if we can change this bottom half of the fuse panel, this plastic cover, and the bracket that's bent. So there's the new panel. It's pristine inside. It's like brand new. Notice there's only two fuses in here and not the five that's in the other one. Like I said, those other five, those other three fuses don't go anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to disassemble this to reuse this plastic housing and transfer all the electrical terminals. I don't want to cut and splice all these wires. That's just crazy. So I'm going to try to uh, disassemble it. I've already pulled the relay out that's broken. So it's just clipped in there so I can replace that. That, that I believe, is the uh, starter cut relay. And the other two relays here are the cooling fan relays. Uh, I took a, a maxi fuse out, or they call it a fuse link, it's a special one. And these terminals look like they'll just depin, so I'm going to depin them one at a time and then try to take apart this housing. I'm going to have to disconnect the battery because we have some live wires here. I believe this white wire, this main power wire is live. So there's all the wires depin from the new part. Even this bus bar comes out. So we're going to change this bus bar over. You have to release all the tabs, take pictures, multiple pictures, so you know where each wire goes. Now we're going to take them out of here. I'm going to have to untape this harness here and uh, change over all these pins. So there's the finished product. All the wires transferred. I changed this broken uh, starter cut relay inserted all the wires in the proper locations so we're ready to put the cover back on I'm gonna put a little bead of silicone around it just to enhance the water keep the water out but I'm gonna leave the bottom of it open where it goes around here just in case any moisture does collect in it so it has a way to drain out and we'll reinstall it in the vehicle so there's the relay center fuses and reinstalled I'm gonna Reconnect the battery and uh, scan it for codes and make sure there's no current codes. I'm pretty sure I got everything connected correctly. There's the, the old piece. And the broken housing and all the electrical tape. <laughs> and a whole bunch of spare terminals that I'm going to throw in my parts drawer. So I decided before I connected the battery that I would check terminating resistance on the CAN bus. Pin 6 and 14 with the ohmmeter read 61 ohms so that's within spec 60 ohms is typically the reading plus or minus two or three so i'm going to actually look at uh can bus activity as well well can bus activity looks textbook perfect the green trace is can l on pin 14 and the yellow trace is can h on pin six you can see the blinking blue LEDs to indicate the activity and I'm using pin 4 as a ground 2.5 volts biased 1 volt positive on the yellow trace and biased 1 volt negative on the green trace so I'm going to ID the vehicle got the key in the run position or ignition in the run position I believe It's going to do a system call, ID what modules are in the vehicle. So I'm going to do a network code scan and see if there's any codes in it. And then we're going to start it up and run it. I'm probably going to give it back to the customer. Didn't really find anything conclusive. I did clean the two grounds on the top of the engine. I cleaned grounds on the body, uh, crimped those terminals for that fuse for the uh, Transmission, sun load circuit start to ground. I don't know if we had that code before or not. We'll pick up when we get to the end of this. Okay, it's done the network post scan. We got the sun load sensor code. We got inhibition, clutch switch signal failure. Maybe generated that by me disconnecting stuff, pulling fuses. 
audiovisual code, and this CAN communication circuit fault in the meter. We did have that before. Let's look at the history, see if that sunload code was in there before. So this is the report from the 27th. A couple days ago when I have that audiovisual code, EVAP code is probably a vent solenoid like it was on the Murano I fixed the other day. I haven't looked at that. Okay, so we're going to clear out this, these codes and see what comes back. Back into clear all codes, read by code scan. It'll take a few seconds to do this. I'll pick up when we get to the end. I find these uh, Nissans painfully slow at doing network code reads and network code scans. It's been like three minutes now and it's still doing a network code clear. Okay, so it's cleared the codes out of 14 modules. Let's go back into the instrument cluster, the meter, and see if there's any communication codes. Well, wow, that's interesting. That didn't clear. I wonder if that could be our problem, because that code was there before, and I assumed the first time that it had to do with low voltage. Let's read that code again. Oh, that cleared. Sometimes the network code clearer doesn't clear the codes. Well, we're going to start the vehicle now. So with it running, we'll see if that code came back did come back. Well, let's have a look at what potentially causes that U1000 because the instrument cluster is responsible for sending the vehicle speed sensor signal to the ECM via the CAN bus. So if there's a communication issue, that could be causing our limp mode. So here's the troublemaker chart for U1000 CAN COM circuit as set in the meter. It says, perform self-diagnostic, turn ignition on, wait two seconds or more, perform self-diagnostic result of meter, MA, MNA, using consult, which is their scan tool. Well, if I go into the diagnostic suite and I go to the main meter unit on my snap-on scan tool, it has codes, clear codes, data. It says this code sets if it's missing communication for more than two seconds. Let's clear it. Read the codes. And it doesn't clear with it running. Hmm. I'm going to shut it off and turn the ignition on. So I'm going to try to clear the code key on engine off or ignition on engine off. Read the codes. So it's either not clearing or it's setting immediately. It at one point did say it was cleared, but it only has to be missing communication for more than two seconds. Well, I can't do any kind of combination meter test with my snap-on scan tool, so I'm going to fire up the Autel. So I'm doing a network code read using the Autel scanner. See if we get any different results. You notice we get into more controllers. I think with the snap-on scan tool we got into 14. I don't recall seeing a chassis control module. I think the key just shut off. No, it did not. So let's look at the report. One code in the meter, which I'm sure is that U1000 code. Now let's go down.
U1000 CAN communication circuit. Three fault codes in the laser radar. Maybe that's why we got you got a U1000 code in the in the laser radar. Power supply circuit two. ECD mode malfunction. C1A26 and C1BB6. Well, that gives us some more stuff to look at. Why didn't the snap-on scan tool report those codes? Hmm. So I did some research on that uh, laser radar system. It has three codes in it. U1000 communication code. A C1A26 ECD mode malfunction and a C1A02 power supply circuit. Now I attempted to clear them and the power supply circuit code went away. The chassis control module had ignition power supply code and I cleared that and hasn't come back. But the meter is logging at U1000 and so is the laser radar system U1000 plus the C1A26 and when I do a search for it I can't find any information on that code. Hmm. And of course the U1000 code is just a generic communication code. Now this vehicle wasn't an accident obviously, so vehicle was in a front end collision, has communication codes U1000 and U1001 came from body shop, warning light, chassis control. Well it's not, the chassis control module doesn't have that code. So we'll look at diagnostics here. Uh, and this is in the laser radar system. So I'm going to find that troubleshooting chart. Uh, 